Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and I'm here today to show you a few of the highlights in the new Construct 3 release 358. Let's jump in. First of all, there's a great new feature for the text object, which is that you can now put icons in line with the text. Here's an example of it, and I'll just quickly show you how it works. There's a new property in the text object, which lets you set a, an icon set from a sprite object. So here I've got a sprite object used just for the icons, and if I open that, you can see it's got all the animation frames of the sprite, which can each be used as an icon inside the text object. Another thing I'll point out here is there's also another new feature, which is that you can tag animation frames. So you can essentially give a label for each animation frame, which has its own uses. So you can access that in event sheets and uh, access the label of the current animation frame. Uh, so that's a associated feature. Uh, this will come up with icons as well in a moment. Uh, that's why I'm just pointing that out here. So um, the text object can now use that sprite for icons. And here they are. Once that's uh, been set in the text object, then you can refer to the icons with BB code, which is our sort of way of formatting text. So you can refer to icons uh, using the index, which is zero based, uh, using the icon tag there. But one of the reasons we added the animation frame tag is it's a nicer way to refer to icons using a uh, more of a name for the icon, a descriptive name other than just a number. So it makes it easier to tell and easier to write your um, BB code referring to icons. And once you've got that all set up, um, the icons appear in line with the text and you can see as you adjust the size of the text, the icons flow and update in line with the text um, which is very useful. Very nice feature for showing things like uh, controller buttons or items to collect in the game and so on and so forth. There's additional features where you can change the size of the icons with BB code, uh, adjust the vertical alignment and more. Have a play around with this example and uh, you can see uh, how it all works. And of course it works with other features such as typewriter text, uh, counting each icon as a individual character. I'll just quickly show you one more thing you can do with that, which is also um, converting the whole text object, including its icons, to HTML. So this gives you another way to uh, use more advanced text usage. So for example here, it's in a HTML element, it's exactly the same text you can see there, uh, and it's scrollable with a, a bit of CSS, and you can also select the text. So this is another sort of more advanced way of using icons in text as well, with a nice bit of HTML integration. So that's uh, icons in text and also the animation frame tag. Uh, the other um, feature I'll cover here is um, there's a new internationalization plugin. So this is really useful for being able to translate and localize your game. So it's got tools to look up uh, translations from a language file, uh, much like Construct uses itself for translations. So if all the text in your game comes from a JSON file or another kind of data file, then to translate it, all you need to do is uh, translate all the text in that file into another language, and it'll appear in your project uh, in a different language. But there's more to it than that. There's things like uh, language names and region names and formatting of dates and times, uh, which this example demonstrates here. So this is the uh, British English uh, locale. Uh, and if I change that to French, you can see all of this updates uh, to the uh, typical um, French uh, formatting for that language. And there's more to it. There's things like number formatting, so you can see uh, with British English, there's a dot for the decimal, and in French, it's a comma. And uh, there's also pluralization. So um, in English, typically, uh, plurals are anything other than the number one. Um, but there are actually six categories of plurals covering all languages, uh, and it, it depends on the language. So uh, the internationalization plugin has also got plural features to help you work with that and make sure uh, numbers are always formatted correctly. So that's a great feature if you want to translate your game and bring it to new audiences around the world. 
Next up, I'm going to show another new feature just very briefly. There's a new feature called Dynamic Layers. And uh, in short, this allows you to add, uh, move, and remove layers uh, at runtime. So there's now system actions where you can add a whole new layer, including sub layers. Um, and uh, you can also remove them and uh, move them around. So this is useful for things like advanced lighting effects and in some cases uh, for handling user interface uh, controls such as pop-ups and dialogues and things like that. So take a look at that. And the last thing I'm going to cover in this video is there's now a new uh, cloud service we run for minifying projects. So if you've previously exported your project and used this uh, minify option here, this um, in brief compresses your JavaScript so it's shorter, faster to download, and it also makes it much harder to read, which is some protection against reverse engineering. So here I've chosen uh, advanced mode and uh, I'm going to just export with that. And you can see in the bottom left here, um, it's now working and it's now using a server that we operate to minify that code for you. Previously, we used a Java application, um, Clojure Compiler made by Google, which was converted into JavaScript. Um, and for some people, it ran very slowly and it could have taken a very long time to export your project uh, when minified. And now it's running on our server and it's running the real Java application directly. It should be much faster. It should be in the region of 20 to 30 seconds uh, to export like it did just there. So if previously you've been avoiding that because it took too long, uh, give it another go. It should be working much better now. And uh, just to show how the minify option works. I'm opening one of the JavaScript files and you can see it's all been uh, compressed and mangled and it's very hard to make sense of so it's not very useful to anyone uh, trying to make sense of your code. That's how the minify option works. Okay that's all I'm going to cover in this video. We hope you enjoy this release. Uh, thanks for using Construct.